in the past, I've done videos on old fashioned frugal tips, things we need to learn from our grandparents' generation and pass to the generations beyond us so that we can remember how they saved money and lived more simply. But that's not gonna be in this video. We're going to talk about modern frugal living tips, things that have come about that are great ways to save money that have a direct reflection of what's happened in life in the past couple of decades. I thought about this idea when I saw this recent survey from Bankrate. I will put the entire article in the description box below. And the title says, Americans spent $71 billion in the past 12 months on social media impulse buys. It goes on to say, and this is from September 18, 2023, social media appears to be having a significant influence on consumer spending as a new bank rate report reveals that Americans spent $71 billion on impulse purchases of products they saw on a social media platform in the past year, with the average impulse buyer spending $754. When you think about that amount of money, it's staggering. And really with social media, it's only been more recent in modern times that this has been something else that's causing us to spend money. So let's talk about the modern frugal tips that we can use to counteract this. The first one I want to talk about is actually using the internet to your benefit. Have you ever gone to a store and you're wanting to look in the clearance aisles and you go to the store and they have aisles and aisles of racks with completely random clothing, overstuffed, random, misplaced, mislabeled as far as size goes, and you know that you can't possibly sit there and search through that stuff for the best deals. The best thing you can do is go on to your favorite retailer's website. That's the benefit of having this online presence. Online, you can go in and search for something in particular. Let's say you're looking for a new pair of jeans. You want to make sure they're boot cut, their size, whatever your size is, they're a dark wash you can use the filter button on the clearance item. So you go to your retailer's website, you go to clearance sell items, you use the filter and you filter down from all of those random things overstuffed to exactly what you're looking for. I especially love doing this for the next size up for my daughter. I'll go to the kids section after the season's over, search the size I believe that she'll be the next season and I'll put it in and get some great deals. My favorite way to use this modern thing called the internet. Number two is a fantastic way to make sure you are not overspending at the grocery store. And listen, I hear you on the grocery store. It is a struggle to continue to try to save even myself, I am trying and trying to keep that under budget every week and it is getting harder and harder. So for some people, doing grocery pickup is the best bet for them. Grocery pickup or having it delivered depending upon if there's a fee or not, sometimes usually with grocery pickup there isn't a fee or it's a minimum order of $35. What this does is you're able to shop in the comfort of your own home. You're able to pick out the items that you particularly need on your list. You can also compare prices and you don't have to be bombarded with tons of people in the store staring at two different labels and you have you know somebody behind you going, hey, will you move? This is great because you can then know that your budget is, let's say it's $100 and if you are at 110, what can you take off? And then you go and pick up those groceries. Of course, there are good and bad things with everything. Always check to make sure you got everything in your cart. Also, one thing that is sometimes happening is some retailers are getting a little bit sneaky and they're charging more on the app. So for instance, let's say it's milk, they'll have $1.50 for milk on the app, but if you go into the store, it might be $1.45, just using round numbers. That still could save you if you're really someone who has a hard time sticking to your list or you just are really, really overwhelmed when you go in the store and you always get random things that don't belong and somehow come out way over budget. Number three is another one regarding the internet and a way to save. This is great because you can find the lowest price on an item. So you go to the search bar of whatever search engine you're using. Let's say you're looking for a new computer. Again, we're just gonna use something random here. You find a great computer on a large electronic retailer's website. Always compare your pricing. This is super simple. You take your little mouse and you copy the description of what exactly the computer megabytes, whatever, brand, et cetera, is, copy it. And then you paste it in the, in the browser search thing and you hit search. 
Then you go to the shopping tab. You know, up there it says all shopping, images, maps, all this shopping. This will give you the price for it at that item at other retailers. You could find that there's a $200 discount at another big box retailer. Always use this. Once you find an item, make sure that store that you're on that you found it is the best deal. If not, check around. Number four is to sell the things in your house that you're decluttering, that you no longer need, that are worth something, or that, hey, you maybe you refinish furniture or you are really good at thrift shopping and reselling things. Whereas in the past, before the last couple of decades in the age of the internet, you would just have to rely on anybody driving around to your garage sale to be able to come and buy your things. Now you have opened up your world to so many people who are looking for that exact same item and using that search engine to try to find it. So selling your things online is just a great way to bring in more money because remember that saving money is also about having money come in and spending less of it. Number five, as with most things, with things, there are good things about it and bad things about it. I mean, you've got your phone. There's great things about it now. You've got the map. You can get wherever you need to. If you get a flat tire, you can call your friend or your spouse to come and help you out. But there are also bad things, as in the, the fact that social media is causing us to do all of these impulse buys or we're spending all of this time on our phones rather than interacting with each other. With the good comes the bad. So we have to be able to use these things for the good. And number five is directly related to social media. There are ways that you can use the internet and social media to your benefit as in if you're selling something, but you have to be intentional with your use. Several years ago, I can't remember if it was three or four, I decided to get off of social media and yet Yes, I'm on YouTube. That is all that I am on, on. But I'm talking about where I had private pages, where I had friends from high school, family members, etc. You know, those pages where you can scroll and scroll and scroll and see what somebody you knew 20 years ago is doing. I realized that was bad for me. And then all these marketing pop-ups and then seeing other people's lives. I realized when I got off, I felt worse and I was more likely to give into those impulses. YouTube, and some people will go, well, Jennifer, you're on YouTube. It's a social media platform. YouTube is a video sharing and a social media platform. Certainly, you can research and talk about people's lives on social media, but I use YouTube and my videos on YouTube are a video sharing platform where I share stories about how I was in debt and now I am not, how I got out and how I am continuing to live a frugal, money-saving, simplistic lifestyle. So remember, if you're using social media in the wrong way, maybe you remove the apps from your phone. Maybe you do a 30 day freeze. It's very important to use these things intentionally. Number six is store brands. Has nothing to do with the internet. As stores are growing, they are beginning to expand further and further their store brand. So whereas 10, 15, 20 years ago, there may not have even been a store brand or very few items and they weren't very good, there are so many more, so if you haven't checked out or tried a store brand item in a while, maybe it's worth picking some up. I will link a video down below where I bought the exact same variety of item in the store brand and the name brand, and I saved, I believe it was somewhere between 40 and 50%. The cost was crazy. So check out that video. And if you're not one who's used store brands in the past, it might be time to check them out. You can read the comments of those videos as well because you will hear from people who have friends, family members, or have themselves worked in food factories where all they do is change out the labels on, on some of these items. It's very interesting. Check the comments out of that video as well. Number seven, we got smart thermostats. Smart thermostats are fantastic. You're going on vacation. You work nine to five. You're not there all day. Why do you need to keep your house as warm or as cold as you have it if you're not there? You could easily, with a lot of these thermostats, change it when you're you know, on your app, on your phone, set it to where it's programmed. It knows that you're at not at home Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. This is going to save so much money on these ever increasing utility bills. And yes, this past week, we just got a notice that our electricity base rate was going to increase. These things are going to continue to go up. And so this is one way that's a modern way we can start to save is investing in a smart thermostat. Number eight, 
There has never been less of an excuse not to keep a budget and track your spending with budget apps on your phone. I have talked about before, I use the every dollar app. I know it's not available in some countries and I also use the free version. There is a 14 day trial and a more advanced version, but the free version is fantastic and has absolutely all the bells and whistles you need. It used to be clunky, it's not anymore, but it's called the every dollar app. I know so many people who use this and absolutely love it because it's very, very good. And I believe there's one that will used to be very popular that's closed down, so more people might be looking for it but a budget and tracking spending are two humongous key things that everybody should do and in doing them you should begin to start seeing more control of your money and start seeing where you can spend less and save more and so now you don't have to carry around your receipts spend hours reconciling them in a notebook to add them up to see how much you spent how much you have are under or over in one category, you could easily do it on your app. So another great modern convenience that's helping us budget and save our money. Number nine, I remember my mom having the checkbook, writing down what she spent, keeping her receipts, going home, waiting for the monthly bank statements to come in, sitting at the dining room table with the bank statement and with the checkbook and balancing to make sure every check went through and that the bank had it right, hours and hours. Now you can check your accounts all the time. And obviously, again, with the good and the bad, with cards and virtual online presences and with your card being plugged into Amazon, things can get, they do, they steal them. You know, your card number can get stolen and it can be a fraudulent charge on there. So with the good comes the bad, you are able to check it whenever you want to see if those are on there. And I know for me, I always get this almost instinctual feeling when it has happened <laughs> and I check my account and lo and behold, it's been there. It's probably happened to me three or four times. So this is one great thing, convenience of being able to go and check that account. You can, on a weekly basis, reconcile your expenses to make sure everything is correct rather than waiting for that bank account, calling that place 30 days after that transaction and trying to get things squared away. You can do it the next day if you catch it. Number 10 is automating your savings. If you don't see it, you won't miss it. This is putting away percentages that come out of your paycheck towards maybe your retirement accounts. This is letting your HR know and having them send a portion of your paycheck straight to your savings account um, direct deposit number and the rest goes to your checking or operating account in business terms that I like to call it. This is automatically setting up where money goes and you don't see it so you don't know it's theirs. I always say if you ever get a raise or bonus or anything else put that automatically in savings because if you are already living on what you had coming in put the rest away and see if you can continue to live on what you had coming in. Because the goal in getting to any kind of financial freedom or to reach your savings goal is to widen what I call the gap between your income and your expenses. So if you have any income increases, put those away again, because it's gonna increase your savings and try as much as you can and give yourself grace with the cost of things now to keep your expenses close to where they are. Number 11 is something you most certainly should not have done 20, 25 years ago. But today it is highly encouraged and that is leave it in your cart. This is not something you should have done 20, 25 years ago. You know, go through the store, shop, and then leave your cart parked and you walk out. Meaning you just kind of scratch, scratch the itch of shopping and you left it for the store employee to put away. Don't do that. But now with online shopping, it is actually recommended because what will happen is if you're having that urge to shop, you see your favorite retailer has a huge sale, go in, add all the things to the cart scratch that itch and then leave it close out go do some laundry go to work wait a week a couple of things will happen number one majority of the time i'd say 90 percent you've done all you needed to do to get rid of that little you know spendy part that was itching at you or two there was something you really really liked you've waited a week you realize you still really really like it 
And you could end up getting an email from the retailer saying, hey, you left something in your cart, here's a 20% coupon. Even I do this, even if I know I am intentionally buying something, I will do this to see if I get sent a coupon. For instance, we bought a, a knife set for a gift at um, some sort of kitchen uh, online retailer. We put the information in there, closed out. Guess what ca came in? Not a few hours later. Hey, you, you left something behind, 20% discount. So this is one modern frugal tip that you should do. Number 12, in the past, you relied on the local newspaper, your friend calling you, or maybe even a, a sign out in front of a place where an event was happening to find fun, free entertainment locally in your area. Not anymore. You can easily go onto the internet and search in your area for fun, free activities that you, your family, your friends can go and do. This is such a modern way to be able to spend time outside of your house with your family and friends and not spend a lot of money. Number 13. In the past, you used to rely on people to tell you what may be a good purchase or their favorite brand of this and hope that maybe it was in the newspaper and it wasn't someone just paying for marketing and it really was a good item. The great thing now is you can read reviews from people all over the world before you make big purchases. This is one of my biggest things that I love to do and I don't care if the item is $5 or $500. I am reading reviews. Now you have to be very discerning with reviews. Always check to see if it was part of her promotion, like they sent the product out and they said, hey, we're gonna send you this product for free if you will put a positive review. They do that and always sit there and realize sometimes too, where for instance, I remember I looked at these small stud earrings and the, the reviews on them were really, really low. And I thought, what's going on? I read the review and said, it said, oh, it's a single earring. And I thought, well, it says that in the description. So instead of you saying it's a nice earring or, or realizing that you didn't realize it was, a, was not a pair of earrings, you gave it a one star because you made a mistake. So you have to realize that you have to be discerning in those reviews, but you should use those reviews to your benefit to make sure you're buying a quality piece, something that's gonna stand up this test of time, something that is not really good or that has a lot of bad reviews. Don't even waste your money on it. Move on to the next thing. Number 14. With the good comes the bad, subscriptions. Now is the day and age of subscriptions. Everything is some sort of 14 day free trial and a monthly fee in order to get it. You don't just go out and get your DVDs or your VHSs and rent your movies and send them back. Now you pay a monthly fee so that you can have the service of getting whatever the movies are or the, the uh, music without the commercials in it. All of these subscriptions. The thing about subscriptions though is they get out of control. So many of the tips that I give about subscriptions is to keep track of them. Keep a Google Notes app and have in there exactly what it is, the cost of it, the website, your password, when it's reoccurring. If it's a free trial, set a reminder so that you can cancel the free trial if you don't like it beforehand, before you get charged. And then once a month or once every couple of months, go through your list of subscriptions and see if you're not using any of them. You can also rotate your subscriptions. Let's say there's three different movie or TV show um, people, I don't know, companies that you can go through. Go through one at a time. Have one for a couple months, cancel it. Go back to the next and you can go back on any time you want. They, they won't keep you from reactivating that account if you've canceled it for a couple of months. But rather than spending $15 a month on something you're not even paying attention to, delete it until you want to go back to it. Number 15, there is never that I can think of been a time in history where you can learn so many things for free at the drop of a hat, in your hand, on the computer, anytime. And YouTube is one of the best places for that. So let's say you want to learn some of these 
old fashioned habits because your grandparents are past and you haven't been taught them or learning how to save money and live more frugally. For instance, making your own bread and I am starting to figure out the sourdough thing. My friend has done the starter. If you have any tips on this, let me know. But I found a couple of great channels that have talked about it and they go into depth about it. You can learn all about scratch cooking, which saves you so much money. And I'm so excited to learn how to make my own sour dough bread. So utilize the, the internet to learn how to do anything that you want to do. I learned how to do YouTube from filming to camera equipment to microphone equipment, lights, how to edit videos, how to do the, the description box, all from YouTube, all for free. So use that to your advantage. And number 16 is a little off the wall, but I had to include it. And I'm sure people did something similar a long time ago, but it really in the last couple of decades has taken off. And what this is, is for me, a visual thing is so important, a vision board. I'm sure you've heard about it. You could call it a goal board, but every year I make a goal board. I put the year up and I think about the different parts in my life and what I want to accomplish. And what I, the, I put this in my closet so I see it every single day when I get dressed. I am reminded when I go out the door what I'm working for, what I'm sacrificing to do. So with anything, you know, if you want to get healthier, you might have to sacrifice eating soda and or not eating drinking soda and eating donuts. If you're trying to save money because you want to pay off your mortgage or go on a nice vacation, you might have to again skip soda and skip donuts because they're expensive buying them out. This helps keep that reminder of when you were in that good intention, that goal setting idea, you have that in front of you so that you can be reminded every single day because the monotonous marketing that happens, again, good and bad, from online, from our phone, from social media, from the news, again, starts to distract us. And then I, all we know is a year goes by and we are no closer to our goals. So creating a vision board or a goal board, I, I just go onto Pinterest, it's one of my favorite things, I put in some ideas, and then I will print out these images and I will put them on a board. So however you need to do it, this is one of my favorite things to do. And I feel as if it's been either revamped or it's a real newer thing, more modern, of a way to stay focused on your financial goals. If you have any modern money saving tips, leave them down in the description box below. I would love to hear them. If you enjoyed the video, click on that like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way you can come back for more videos.